Reduction of a subluxed radial head, referred to as a nursemaid's elbow, can be rapidly and safely performed in a child who has a history and physical exam consistent with the diagnosis. Nursemaid's elbow is caused by traction of the arm, most commonly due to pulling of the arm. History usually involves an abrupt pulling or lifting of the arm with subsequent refusal to move the arm. Although traction of the arm is the most common mechanism, some children will have no history of this. The injury can also occur from a fall. It occurs in toddlers between the ages of one and four, but very rarely before the age of one or after the age of eight. Bilateral radial head subluxation is rare, but can happen in the child grasping or swinging from a bar or side rail, or when a parent swings the arm of a child with both arms extended. On physical exam, the arm is held with the elbow partially flexed. There is no ecchymosis or deformity and no swelling, except possibly of the distal forearm as a result of not using the arm. There is no tenderness on palpation and no pain with movement, except for with supination and pronation. Position the child next to the caregiver or on the caregiver's lap with the caregiver holding the child's torso and unaffected arm. Reduction can be performed either by supination flexion or by hyperpronation. Both procedures have a very high success rate. Based on studies comparing the techniques, hyperpronation may have a higher success rate and may cause less discomfort. Positioning of the hands is the same for both techniques. Therefore, one technique can be performed immediately after the other if the initial technique is not successful. Facing the patient, position one of your hands around the affected elbow. While most clinicians use their non-dominant hand, regardless of which of the child's arms is affected, some always use the hand directly across from the patient's affected arm. If you use the hand opposite the patient's arm as you face them, position your index or middle finger on the radial head. With your other hand, which for most clinicians is their dominant hand, encircle the patient's wrist so that the ulnar surface of their arm is toward the palm of your hand. Having your thumb and fingers on opposite surfaces of the wrist, that is dorsal and palmar, may provide more control than having the thumb and fingers meet over the radial aspect of the wrist. Hold the arm with the elbow flexed at 90 degrees. In one continuous motion, rapidly and forcefully supinate the forearm, then fully flex the elbow. Success of the procedure may be improved by exerting slight pressure on the radial head, or applying gentle longitudinal traction to the wrist to extend the elbow to facilitate release of the radial ligament from between the radial head and capitellum, as was done for this reduction. Most of the time, a palpable or audible click or clunk will be appreciated as the subluxation is reduced. An alternative method for radial head subluxation reduction is via hyperpronation. First, start by holding the arm with the elbow at 90 degrees after palpating the radial head with your thumb or index finger. Hold the wrist with your thumb and fingers on the dorsal and palmar aspects of the wrist. Rapidly hyperpronate the forearm. Some advocate immediate flexion of the elbow after hyperpronation. Most of the time, a palpable or audible click or clunk will be appreciated as the subluxation is reduced. In some cases, you may not feel or hear a click or clunk. Despite this, the subluxation may be reduced. If uncertain, reattempt reduction immediately while the child is still upset using either the same method or the method you did not initially use. Leave the patient for 10 to 15 minutes to allow the child time to start using the arm. 90% of children will begin using the arm within 15 minutes, and nearly all by 30 minutes. If the reduction is successful, the patient should be able to grasp objects, flex at the elbow, 
and lift their arm above their head. Offer the child a toy or snack while the parent restrains the uninjured arm to test function of the arm in the child who is not spontaneously using the arm. Immobilization is not required after successful reduction except in rare cases of recurrent subluxation within a short period of time. Analgesia is usually not required after the procedure but may be given if the caregiver is concerned about discomfort. No follow-up radiography is needed once there is return of movement to the elbow. Inform caregivers that subluxation may recur and advise them that the child should be picked up by holding them under the axilla.